one of the reasons why the, the, the new metaphysics, new religion I describe in this book is identifiable is because the people who follow it behave with all the zealotry that religious fanatics have behaved with in the past. It's not enough that they believe something, you have to believe it too. Um, I wrote in The Spectator recently about the, uh, it's, a minor, it's, a, it's a minor thing, but uh, there's a restaurant in America called Chick-fil-A. Yes, I saw that article. Um, Chick-fil-A, uh, some of the people, family, it's a Christian family business. Um, Pretty big chain. It's a big chain, third largest chain uh, restaurant in America. Opened uh, um, uh, uh, for the first time in the UK uh, in October and uh, announced shortly afterwards that it's closing uh, because of protests by local self-appointed gay activists. Uh, because Chick-fil-A in America, the Christian family who found it, gave donations about 10 years ago to a family charity, family-oriented uh, charities, which included opposition to gay marriage and so on and so forth. Now, here's the thing with that, like with the Equinox gym controversies in the summer in the US, is it's not enough that that these people choose not to eat their chicken nuggets at this place. You mustn't either. And they mustn't serve chicken nuggets and they must close. Well, even if the family who run Chick-fil-A are the most opposed to gay marriage ever, I still think if some people want to eat their chicken nuggets, they should have the damn right to do so. But that, that instinct is not there in the social justice warriors of our time. It's not just that they don't want the thing, they don't want you to do the thing either, or to have the right to do the thing, because only by total decimation of their enemies can they win. Yeah. That isn't liberalism no. in any interpretation of the term, yeah. any interpretation. And how does it fit with the insistence of gays in America, for example, but also we see this in Australia, that um, you know the the, the baker issue, the mm -hmm. uh, uh, baking of a wedding cake. Oh no no, you you cannot possibly exercise your conscience uh, if a gay couple want mm. a wedding cake, you must provide it. Mm. How does it fit well, with the right on the other side to close a business down oh, yeah. because it has a different perspective? How about going back to the courage issue? Maybe these people are all just incredibly cowardly and lazy. Maybe that's all that's going on. You see, it, it's, it's quite easy to say, I refuse to eat my chicken nuggets at that place in Reading. That's quite easy. I mean, I've spent all my life ducking eating chicken nuggets in Reading. I, I can keep doing it if I want. Uh, um, <laughs> but, but it's, if you think that's the main issue in that rights issue, it means, among other things, you can avoid the harder ones. Well, here's a harder one. There are still dozens of countries in the world where it's illegal to be gay. There are still around a dozen countries where you can be executed for being gay. If you're a gay rights activist, mightn't that be a place to start? Mightn't that be, a, mightn't that be one closer to the boat? As it happens, I know nobody's meant to say anything at all uh, um, praising of him, but as it happens, Donald Trump has said he wants to make this a priority, actually. The, he is, his administration is looking at trying to stop the countries which still make being gay illegal from doing so. They're going to tie it to aid and all sorts of other things. That strikes me as being a very good, laudatory gay rights move. Let's, let's, make, let's try to make sure that there's nowhere in the world you get hanged or stoned for being gay. It's also, for, for many individuals, a bit of a hard one. Why? Well, it means you have to make a value judgment means you have to say, actually, I think the way we do things in our society is better than the way they do in that society. Well, oh, we that's know, cultural imperialism. D deep cultural imperialism. Who are you to say that they shouldn't shove the wall on the gays? Um, and again, much of the lazy, cowardly social justice movements that pretend that they're incredibly brave don't want to get into that. Run an awfully long way, very fast. Hmm. Power seems to be at the heart of a lot of this new, if I can put it this way, anger, mm -hmm. uh, this sort of desire to uproot everything. Why is it that we don't see the pursuit of power for the ugliness that it is? I mean, Acton was surely right. We should be wary of power. It does corrupt. An absolute power does tend towards uh, absolute uh, 
corruption. We don't seem to value things like love, harmony, community, mm. turning the other cheek, forgiveness. Mm. They seem to be under ruthless attack as belonging to an era we despise, which enjoyed a Christian conception, uh, uh, consensus uh, in terms yes. of, of the way we viewed the world and our neighbour. Well, it, one of the striking things about going to societies that are radically different from your own and why it's worth doing is because it can wipe you of some of your presumptions about what the natural state of mankind is. Yeah. You know? Um, a lot of people in countries like Australia who think that, for instance, loving your neighbor is the natural default condition of people, have an awful shock coming to them, not just in their own countries where, of course, nobody can entirely live up to that very strenuous command, but in all sorts of countries and societies around the world where people act and behave differently, where the state of nature is, is, is different. Um, our societies put a premium, or did put a premium in the past, as you mentioned earlier, the cricketer example, on magnanimity and victory, for instance, um, humility and defeat, or graciousness and defeat, among other things. These are not the natural defaults. These are learned behaviors, learned because there was a deeper undertow beneath them that told you that these things were worthwhile. Charity, for instance, is not the state of nature of mankind to be charitable, let alone charitable to people you haven't even met and are very unlikely to meet. These are learned behaviors, taught behaviors, from a very specific tradition. That isn't to say that other traditions don't have elements of it themselves. They do. They have versions of it. But our societies today have become fixated in the post-Christian era have become fixated on power as the primary dynamic and understanding mechanism for human society. And my view is, as I say in the part about Foucault in this book, I think this is a really deeply perverted way to look at society, where we interpret interest groups and others as forever scurrying to achieve power, and we entirely ignore what for most of us remain the more important drivers in our lives. If you were to say to somebody, what drives you? If you went up to the average person in Melbourne and said, what drives you? If they said power, <laughs> you'd step away slowly. More likely they would say something along the lines of um, love for my family, friends. They might have a wider group of people they express that towards community, town, civic, perhaps even nation. Um, they wouldn't say power. Now, the reason why we're bad at talking about this is, among other things, because it's a more embarrassing, icky thing to talk about than power. To tr purely look at power dynamics. Are the men powerful over the women? Are white people powerful over people of color and so on and so on ad infinitum? Is it slightly easier to do than to talk about the flip side of that, which is love, forgiveness, charity, and more? And I think conservatives have been bad about talking about some of this, as other people have. Um, conservatives in recent decades have to a great extent thought that the point of their philosophy is to talk about the marketplace and economics and leave the rest. That's been a disaster. Been a disaster. Uh, one thing that brought it home, uh, I'm, I'm reviewing a book at the moment, in which he, uh, an economist has written uh, about the collapse of Lehman. Mm. And when you actually, uh, his thesis is essentially that the abandonment of the classic virtues, prudence, integrity, courage, and so on and so forth, was what led to that frightful mess. Mm. In other words, the abandonment of morality mm. has disastrous economic outcomes. And conservatives have by and large missed that, as I think yeah. Those who might have been classic liberals are now mm -hmm. small L libertarians, by and large, have missed it as well. And short-termism. And they've played uh, right into the hands of those who dislike capitalism in the first place. Yes. I mean, well, there's been, I mean, because capitalism has produced a better system than any other system we know of, of course, doesn't mean it doesn't have flaws within it. And one of the flaws always has been um, 
short-termism. It's why, why family businesses can often be so successful is because, as you know, the, um, uh, if you were to raid the whole thing, strip it, present a false version of itself, you're going to suffer for it. Um, there's a phenomenon I've often noticed of family businesses, for instance, ending up in the hands of outsiders who squeeze, maximize yeah. profits because they want to run off quite shortly afterwards yeah. and having made their pile. Um, a conservative approach to this, a small c conservative approach to this, among other things, would say, but this is, a, this is an immoral thing to do yeah. in itself because it's not your right to simply squeeze the value that's been accumulated by others, run away with it, and then allow it to collapse. That's not a decent thing to do. There have, by the way, there are versions of this, and I'm sure there are in Australia, there have been quite public versions of people who are now being shamed for that kind of behavior. Oh, absolutely. And it's yeah. very, I think it's a, oh. I think it's a positive step. Uh, people like Philip Green, who uh, asset stripped a, a major um, high street chain here in it's the UK. It's being exposed, yeah. but it's a terrible thing that it's happening. And it's, mm. there's a sense in which it starts to wind back freedoms, doesn't it? We had a commission of inquiry, right. and a royal commission of inquiry into the banks and the financial sector in Australia. It revealed a, some terrible behaviour. To be fair, a lot of people behave very decently and they get tarred with the same brush. But nonetheless, there's a massive problem. And the reaction is people say, oh, thank heavens we had the royal commission of inquiry. Now we can have 78 new sets of pieces of legislation, more surveillance, more monitoring, greater fines. And then we find that credit starts to become a problem because everybody becomes cautious. So the problem in essence is that the bankers weren't asking themselves what they ought to do, right. rather what can we get away with? There is a, um, there's an additional problem we've uh, put upon our shoulders, which is there are, I, I'm, I'm sure the Germans would have a term for this, but there are, there are categories of problem which we, we don't address because the only people who've been trying to address them are people with the worst possible answers. Capitalism, I think, falls into this basket. Um, uh, the people who have been critiquing it the most for many years have made a lot of other people not want to critique it because those people who've been critiquing it all along have an answer, and it's Marxism. Yes, yeah. So we avoid, the, we avoid yeah. having the discussion because yeah. we simply don't want, it's the same thing with the inequality discussion, yeah. I, I think, yeah. which is that there, is a, there are so many discussions to have about inequality, and, the, and actually there's been quite a lot of literature about them, about that issue over the decades. It's sort of been run through already. Uh, it's, it's nothing new, that debate that we're going through. But it's very striking to me that, again, the political rights tended to avoid the inequality dis debate. Why? Because the people who've been thinking about it have an answer. It's Marxism. Yeah, sure. And yeah. we want to be absolutely sure if we have that conversation yeah. that they're not going to smuggle Marxism in when we're not looking. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, if I can go back, though, to this issue of the way in which we've actually completely turned on its head now the beliefs and values mm. that underpinned Western society. I mean, we really have. I mean, the Christian model of relationship with your neighbour is established by the idea of Christ dying on a cross, not for his friends even, but for his enemies. Mm. You know, turn the other cheek. Yeah. Um, do unto others as you'd have them do unto yourselves. Um, and then the, I suppose the sort, of the, the sort of minimalist version of that, at least do no harm out of mill. Right. But it's all gone. We've actually reversed it all together in the, in, in, in the interests of the big me, of selfism, of mm -hmm. radical autonomy that says, I will do with my life and my body and my money and my time and my relationships what I choose. Yes. We've actually inverted the worldview, uh, if you like, that, that drove our freedoms. And I think... For me, as someone of Christian belief, the greatest question, I mean, I accept that people have absolutely the right to choose or not choose faith, but the greatest check, a question of all, the greatest challenge for the secularists is on what basis will we no. establish a workable respect for others because no society of a democratic tradition can possibly survive, I, I, I believe, it's impossible to survive if you can't find a basis, a rational, 
basis that's powerful enough to change people's behaviour so that we break free. I mean, you make a good point. We're reverting to type. Mm. Progressives say we're moving endlessly to a better future. But in reality, as you say from looking at other societies as you travel the world, mm. we're losing, if you like, what we had and reverting rather than progressing. Well, what's the single hardest commandment within Christianity? Um, you can get almost everything of Christianity from earlier or other sources. You can get almost everything of Christianity of Jesus' teachings from uh, the ancient Greeks. Um, a lot of the wisdom is very similar. What is the thing that is totally revolutionary about what Jesus says? It's the commandment to love your enemies. Yes. And that is a... And demonstrated in Christian belief yeah. by him actually dying for his enemies. He was dying for them. This is, this is, this is a world historical change of... Com a, a, a command that demands a world historical change. My own view of this is that it is possible in individuals on occasions with exceptional grace. Um, and that it, is, that it is almost impossible for most people most of the time. But that the commandment to, to do that, at the very least, reigns in the worst of our nature. That knowing how we should behave, ideally, means that we can step back from the worst of ourselves, which we know and intuit. Um, this is not an easy thing to replicate without its foundational claim which is the foundational claim, the truth claim made within Christianity. It's what I, I quote in The Strange Death of Europe, the, a German uh, uh, jurist, uh, Bockenforder, who posed this question in the 1960s. Can a society, can a society uh, the, the sort of short version of his, of his um, challenges, can a society continue in the same manner if the thing that gave the source to the society is itself now cut off? And as I say in The Strange Death of Europe, possibly for a time when you're running on the, the fumes still yeah. of that implication. Yeah. Um, can it sustain forever? No, because if you, don't, if you don't believe in the driving force of it, then once the people who did believe it have died out, you're, you're, you're still going on a memory of it and then that dies out. So this is a very big challenge, and it's a challenge which I think the intersectionalists and the social justice warriors and so on have knowingly or otherwise recognized, which is why they're trying to dig in a new metaphysics fast, the metaphysics of LGBT, women, race, etc.